Okay, thank you all for the introduction. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about autofocusing, autofocusing in Los Media. And the first thing that I want to, to answer is the question why. Why we need to address, to, to, to spend our time address this question? Well, this question is very interesting because it's the combination between two different things. One thing is one theoretical tool. This theoretical tool is called autofocusing. We will have learned uh, yesterday in the talk given to us from Filippo, Satian, Jost, that is a very powerful tool. This tool uh, pro, uh, is a, uh, allows us to create virtual sources in interior of the menu. And also, with this tool, we can do imaging using multiples, using the information in the multiples. But what happened in reality? In reality, we always have attenuation. The attenuation is always present in real systems. And what happens when we combine this theoretical tool, autofocusing algorithm, with this real feature of the system? In this case, happening something very interesting. The algorithm gives us a solution. The algorithm converts in a solution. But this solution is not is an unfocused solution. This solution is not longer a focused solution. But let me explain in more detail what I mean with this sentence. No? Imagine that we are going to do a, in, in a impulse response experiment in one image. I'm going to put, a, you can see in this small picture, a, a model, a simple model of five layers, five different layers. I'm going to variate only the density. The velocity is constant in this model, only for simplicity. And you can see that we have a, a red square and a, a blue circle. The red square is a emitter, and the, and the blue circle is our circle. We do an impulse response experiment, and with the signal that we, well, I want to point out that I am not a geophysicist, I am working in non destructive testing, so you can see in the label that the distance, the typical units, are very different to the typical geophysicist. No, it's uh, in millimeters, it's very weird in a geophysical experiment, but very, very typical in a, in a non destructive testing. But the arguments are still holding in other scales, it's the same. So we do the uh, input response experiment and we get this signal, for example, in this model. We get the pressure in function of the time. And we introduce this signal, we give this signal to the autofocusing algorithm. We iterate the autofocusing algorithm and the autofocusing algorithm gives us an other signal, an output. If we introduce this output in our media, we decide we want to do all the wavelengths in one time, it's focused only in one point. This is the thing that happens in a lossless method. We get the input response of the system, we iterate the algorithm, and finally the output of the algorithm introduces this, this output again in the system. You can see in this picture a cross section of the material. The vertical outlines mean the interfaces between the different layers. And you can see that we have only the, the wavelength is only different to zero in only one point. We can decide the algorithm. Uh, iteration method allows us to decide when and where we have this peak. So this happened, you can see that except in this point, in the rest of the material at this time, this is a, a sort of the wavelength in one decide in only one time. It's a cross, a cross section of the material. Then in whatever point different to the focus point, the wavelength is exactly zero. Okay, this is the, the then the algorithm works very good in lossless mail. But what happens if we try to do the same in a lossy media? We get this figure. This figure is again a cross section of the material. You can see the wave in different positions of the material in one time. We have, like before, the, the pools in the position desired for us, but we have also two undesired pools. This means that the, the, the focus algorithm doesn't work in lossy media. But what is the reason for, for the algorithm to do? Don't get to focus in no media. Well, I call it the indistinguishability problem, no? a very weird word. But what I mean with this word? I mean that imagine that we want to do an, an impulse response experiment in an unknown media. The same as before. And we get this impulse response. And we want to know only with the impulse response is the media is losing or losses. Only with the impulse response. I want to remark again that in only one dimension. I want to in an acoustic field. And we can ask this, this question only with, with the input response. The answer is no. 
Okay, I realized that there are a lot of methods to calculate the attenuation or the equilibrium response. But all these methods using extra information, extra reasonable information about, for example, the IOLI, about the, the, the statistical structure of the reflectors. But if you have not, this extra information only with the input response, it's impossible to know if the system is lossy or lossless. Then what happens when we give, when we give this, uh, the input response of the system to the autofocusing model? The autofocusing algorithm cannot know if the system is lossy or lossless. So this algorithm needs to decide what is the case. So the algorithm always choose the lossless option. So even if we give to the algorithm a lossy a input response, a lossy media, the algorithm, as well as the output of the algorithm, is the, the, the focusing solution to the equivalent lossless method. That is not the real case. This is the problem. Then, okay, we know that there is a problem. How can we solve this problem? Okay, we need to understand better what is the basis of the focusing algorithm. The focusing algorithm, uh, uh, the, the main assumption of the focusing algorithm, of the focusing algorithm, is that we need a time reversal symmetry. The wave equation with attenuation has time reversal symmetry. The waves, the behavior of the waves, is the same when the time is going forward and when the time is going backward. But what happens when we introduce attenuation in the media? The attenuation absorbs the energy. So this attenuation breaks this time reversal symmetry. Now, the, the behavior of the waves is not the same when the time is going forward and when the time is going backward. So, so at this moment, I would thought you maybe it's time to recover this energy. Maybe if we recover this energy, we recover again the time reversal symmetry and the algorithm is, is again, is working. So to recover this, this energy, we're going to use a correction function, trying to recover, again, the time reversal symmetry. So what function can, can we use? I, I'm going to use a very simple function, an exponential function. You can say exponential with a parameter alpha. This, uh, this correction function is only a function of time. And this parameter alpha is bigger if the attenuation is bigger, and smaller if the attenuation is smaller. And the thing is very easy. We have a, a lossy response of the media. We, we do the input response experiment, and then we apply the correction function, and we get this correct response. The idea is, in each step of the autofocusing algorithm, we are going to apply this correction function. And well, at this moment, we can ask, we can be wondering if this simple approach is going to work or not. <coughs> Let's see one example. I'm going to use a very, very simple example. Only three layers, velocity constant, attenuation constant. I am going to change the density. And the attenuation is uh, the quality factor, it's constant, and it's uh, more or less close to 30. And we do the, uh, the input response experiment, like before. We get the, this input response experiment, a very simple response. And we try to do the same that, 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 that before. We get this input response. We give this input response to the autofocus algorithm. We iterate again and again. And with the algorithm converts, the, si the signal that the algorithm gives to us, we introduce this signal <coughs> again in the material, trying to, to look for only a focus wave. And what happened? In I, we have uh, two different signals. The blue one, this picture is like before, is a cross section of the material, a cross section of the wave in the material. Uh, the blue Signal is the uncorrected function. And the red signal is the, is the function that we get when we apply the correction. So what happened in this case? We get in the two signals, we get the desired pulse, but in the uncorrected signal, as I apply the correction, we get this undesired pulse. We get other two undesired pulse before, but we are looking for We are uh, focus ourselves in this uh, special undesired pulse. No? And what happens when we apply the correction? <laughs> Look at the red speed, at the red uh, signal. We can see that we cannot correct perfectly this undesired speed, but unless we can decrease his amplitude. So this simple approach, okay, doesn't work perfectly, but unless we can decrease the undesired speed, the size of, um, of this undesired speed. So what is the problem? But I cannot correct perfectly the, this undesired speed. No? I can only reduce his size. 
and I have two small peaks. Now. What is the reason for these two small peaks? The reason is that if you have a constant quality factor, means that the attenuation is different in each frequency. And my, my approach to correct this problem, I use a exponential function, which alpha is independent of the frequency. So this is the problem. So a better solution will be, for example, try to modify this exponential correction function. Try to use other more fancy, more complex, maybe with alpha depends on the time, for example, correction function. So this, this is going to be a good uh, line of research for the future, for example. Uh, using other correction for attenuation, other, other functions, or maybe other operators, not simply multiply by a function. Um, other, uh, other thing that I want to research is uh, extend this algorithm to higher dimension. And at this point, I only show to you numerical experiments in 1D. But extend this idea to 2D or 3D is very easy. At least with this exponential function, it's straightforward. Try it, but very interesting because it's more famous application in the practice. And the third thing that I want to, I think that is very, it will be very interesting to, to see in the future, is characterize attenuation using focusing. This is more or less the opposite than the question that I address in this talk. Imagine that we can uh, measure very good the, the focusing. Then we can, for example, search for the parameter alpha that get the perfect focusing. Then we can use this parameter alpha to now the attenuation. This is the opposite question that, that I addressed before. And this is all. I only want to say to gracias, that means thank in Spanish. Gracias especially to Rob for giving me the opportunity to be here uh, three months learning a lot about science. And gracias to everyone and all my friends in the CWP for, for giving me a smile while I'm Thank you very much. <laughs>